was a good number of years ago that the TV crew and I made our way to the Lakeland, Florida area to shoot a program <laughs> about a brand new golf destination called Stream Song. Nobody had heard of it. Nobody had been there. It was kind of difficult to find at first. And I remember being on that property and in the, the incredibly cool hotel that first couple of nights, we were, I think, the only people in the hotel. There might have been one other room occupied out of the hundreds that are in there. And here we are now all these years later in 2021, and here's Streamsong as a national destination. It is fantastic. On a parallel track, I can remember years and years ago, setting foot on the property at a place called Forest Dunes in Roscommon, Michigan. Forest Dunes also in a very remote location. And that particular Friday afternoon when I arrived on, in July on a perfect afternoon, there was, I think, one or two other cars in the parking lot. We wondered if the place was even open. It was, but it wasn't doing very well. And now another great success story. Forest Dunes is a national golf destination. There are, there are guests flying in from every part of the country to experience Forest Dunes. And so it's pretty rare to have the chance to talk with somebody who is connected to both of those properties. And uh, Rich Mack is the new owner at Forest Dunes, having taken over from Lou Thompson just a very short time ago. So I don't normally do full three-minute introductions like that, Rich. Sorry to ramble on, but the, the laying the foundation for our conversation, I think, is important. And uh, thanks for coming on and chatting. Well, thanks for having me, Bill. I, I appreciate it. Um, I want to I want to kind of cover both of those stories for just a quick moment, but let me start right with the headline. When was the first time you pulled on the property at Forest Dunes, and what were your initial thoughts? <clears throat> you know, I, I got to know Lou Thompson through uh, the development of Stream Song, and I think the first time that I was at um, Forest Dunes would have been the um, the Renaissance Cup that Tom Doak hosts for courses that he has recently built. And so it was kind of the christening of the loop. And so that was my first time uh, to go to Forest Dunes. You know, I live in, uh, in Minnesota, uh, Minnesota, northern climate, very avid golf base. Uh, I think very similar to what you find in Michigan, you know, great golf uh, community lots of great golf courses. And so there were a lot of similarities to kind of where, where I grew up, but to see the, um, you know, the uh, Forest Dunes original course and then having the loop added to it. And then with the infrastructure, you know, that was in place at Forest Dunes, it immediately captures your attention. And so I was, I was really impressed with what I saw, you know, initially, and then you get out and you experience the, uh, the golf environment that is offered there and it uh, makes it that much better. My family has kind of a strange personal connection to Roscommon in that my father, before he retired, owned the Ford dealership in Roscommon as part of his auto dealership network. And, um, and so we were there before there was a Forest Dunes and, and uh, there was a, a, a restaurant in town where the floors are all tilted. We call it the Tilton Hilton. There was a Dairy Queen. And, a, and I say that because you would drive through Roscommon, never thinking that there was any other reason to be in Roscommon, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, Forest Dunes is truly um, its own little community because you're not, once you're on property there, you're on property there. There's not necessarily a lot of things to go and do in the region. You're there to golf and you're there to have fun with your, with your friends. Um, and, and I think Lou really embraced that idea and really got it. It didn't, he didn't try to make the region more than it is, but he certainly did some magical things with the property right there in Compass at Forest Dunes. So, and, and the addition of the short course is a great example of that. Just making use of, of territory that you have and you can reshape and, and add even more fun to it all. So, at what point in that conversation with Lou did you start thinking, yeah, I tell you what, I, this is the kind of place I wouldn't mind investing in? You know, um, so I, I founded Streamsong in the, call it the 2009 sort of time horizon. Construction spanned uh, from 2010. We opened it in 2012. The lodge, the hotel with 228 rooms, that opened in 2014. And then I spent four additional years at uh, Mosaic uh, at the time, um, and I left in 2018. And so when I left Mosaic, I also departed from, uh, from Streamsong. And the, the experience 
that I had in building that destination resort and the connections and the uh, relationships that I was fortunate enough to uh, advance during that period were some of the best uh, and most rewarding experiences of my career. And so I really wanted to kind of find that next destination, that next place where perhaps Tom Sonnerborg and I, um, who helped me uh, create Stream Song, could uh, take it to the next level and, and create something like we did at Stream Song. And so I reached out to Lou shortly after um, I, I left uh, Mosaic in 2018, and we started a conversation. I didn't call him with the intention to say, hey, I want to do something vis-a-vis -vis Forest Dunes, but we just developed a friendship, and that friendship resulted then in some conversations around, you know, what his desires and plans were and what he wanted Forest Dunes to be, and I was, you know, capable, and uh, he allowed me to offer up some of my observations in terms of what I thought Forest Dunes could, could be, and ultimately, uh, it, 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 it ended up in a kind of a win-win transaction where I gave him some certainty on his, you know, uh, uh, estate planning and uh, future intentions and playing golf and kind of throttling back a little bit, lose a very busy guy. And um, it allowed Tom Sonnerborg and myself to kind of get back into the game and, and allow us to do something at Forest Dunes. You know, it's funny, there are, there are some instances where ownership of a golf property causes great consternation, stress, and headaches for the people involved. And then there are some times where you have, you have it so deeply ingrained in your blood where you cannot wait till you get back into it. Is that, that sounds like that's sort of where you were. I think so. You know, I spent um, I spent 25 years in, you know, basically traveling the world and in a number of, you know, very serious uh, Fortune 500 type positions um, in kind of in the agri agricultural space. And for me, uh, at, at the point I was uh, in my life, it just made sense for for me to spend more time now on things that I really enjoyed. I really had it a super passion for. And, you know, I, I describe golf as kind of the confluence of three things, business, sport, and art. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I am a business guy by nature. Uh, I grew up loving sports. I played, you know, I played golf, I played uh, basketball, uh, and I'm, I'm into golf course architecture, which I think is, is a very in incredibly beautiful form of art. And so it's a, it's a fun place to be if you can kind of make that your vocation. And, uh, and that's kind of what we're doing here. How, how well do you remember the early days at Stream Song where I would have to think, and you, you were there, yeah, I would have to think there were a few nervous moments where you looked around and thought, man, we, we built quite a place here. Where is everybody? You know, is there, is there a required level of patience and willingness to absorb the, uh, the <laughs> the the tums that you may be eating one after another <laughs> because the uh, the insides are churning a bit. Yeah, I mean it's uh, when you're developing a uh, a greenfield project from scratch. I mean, Stream Song did not exist. It, it was a vision that I came up with and pitched to a corporate board of directors on what might be. And now there there were reasons from a, a business perspective. Uh, as to why we would want to do it. We really wanted to showcase what you could do on formerly mined land in terms of a reclamation project, but let's make it a business. Um, but to do that, you got to invest a lot of money and a lot of capital. And when you don't have anything out in the middle of nowhere, as you alluded to earlier, and you have to put in things like streets and uh, water <laughs> systems and sewer systems and other infrastructure and electricity. And you built a and city. You're building two golf courses um, concurrently, um, and then you're adding a lot of rooms and restaurants. It was a big project. Um, certainly, there, it was a risky project. It was a controversial project within the, the world that I lived in because many people within the organization were not supportive of the development of Streamsong. But um, I think you have to rely on what that vision is. And, uh, you know, Streamsong was a startup. Forest Dunes is an active business. So there's a bit of a, a, a distinction there. Um, and whenever you're doing a startup, it, there's, it's much riskier. 
and it takes you a period of time to get to, um, you know, kind of the, the ramp up and the stabilization of, of, the, of the destination. So the first couple of years, um, we, we actually came out of the gate with incredible publicity because there weren't very many projects being built in competition to Streamsong. It was just after the financial and credit crisis back in 2008 or so. And of course, um, I retained Tom Doak and, uh, and Bill Corum, Ben Crenshaw, and having that duo, you know, working on a golf project is uh, an attention getter for anybody that is in the game of golf. And, um, you know, if you fast forward to where we're at in 2021, you know, Streamsong has been a home run. I mean, if you talk to people today and you say, give me a top five golf destination that you enjoy most in the United States or in North America, or maybe even in the world, there's going to be a good number of people that will have Streamsong on that list. So mm -hmm. going from absolutely being non-existent in 2000 and call it nine to being discussed as one of the best destination golf locations, you know, in North America here in 2021 is, is obviously a pretty cool accomplishment. Well, especially when you lay down the reminder of when that all started and nobody was spending anything in 2008, 2009. In fact, they probably looked at you more than once with their eyes uh, rolling thinking, what, what is this guy doing? It's, it's the worst financial market uh, in, in recent memory. And, and he's building and he's building. I remember uh, Rich sitting up on top of the hotel with uh, a gentleman who was kind of co-hosting the TV show with me, Tom Park, uh, back in the day. He's not part of Streamsong anymore. But we were up there having appetizers at that rooftop. Uh, uh, Fragmentary Blue. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Fragmentary Blue, which is all related to mining and all that stuff, the name of it is. And uh, it was a perfect night. It was just gorgeous. We were going to eat there before we headed over to the steakhouse for, for dinner. And you could see, you could see till the earth curved. It was such a clear evening. And he said, I know you guys don't understand this now because there's nobody here. There's going to be, and this is going to be a global destination. And we're kind of, you know, we're, we've been around some PR people in our lifetime. Right, sure. we, we've heard audacious claims before. And it's awfully hard to take that statement when you're looking around at what was at that time a very um, a kind of a ghost town feel. And to see the before and after is spectacular. It's stunning. You've added another course down there. And, and so we've established that on that parallel track is Forest Dunes. I understand the scale of them is a little bit different, uh, but the concept is similar. Mm -hmm. um, Lou had that vision that said, you know, this is, this is going to be a national destination. And people probably looked at him sideways and thought, what are you talking about? And then he brings in Tom Doak to do something called a reversible golf course. And here is the, you're, you know, you're a lover of art. Here is a piece of art that is unmatched anywhere in the country. And I'm kind of curious as to uh, what role the loop's uniqueness played in your enthusiasm about buying the property. It's a very good question. You know, um, so, so Forest Dunes, it had a number of things that checked the box for us. Um, the first and foremost, any destination golf, it starts and it ends with the quality of the golf. You have got to have great golf, not good golf, not, you know, kind of good golf. I mean, exceptional golf. You have to have attention to detail. You have to have a great service. You have, have, have to have, you know, great playing conditions um, and, uh, and, and great expectations about the uh, experience that you're going to deliver to your guests. So with the two golf courses or three golf courses or three and a half golf courses, however you want to count them at Forest Dunes, uh, it checked that box, you know, uh, Forest Dunes, the original course is, is you know, I think um, generally viewed as Tom Weisskopf's best, you know, uh, architectural, uh, architectural um, offering to the world of golf. And, and then you add Tom Doak, you know, being based in Traverse City about, you know, 70 miles away, adding a brilliant uh, reversible 18 hole golf course that just is, is puzzling, you know, when you, you play it and you're just like, uh, you're always kind of turning around and looking back and yeah. trying to figure out what hole am I on here, but what hole would I be there? And 
You know, it, it doesn't look or, or feel or play like a reversible golf course. It's, it's two completely separate experiences. And so I think the uniqueness and the innovation and, and Tom ha has wanted to do a project like that for a long time. And, and the one thing that in addition to several, but Lou gets a lot of credit for is he allowed Tom to do it. Many owners, including myself, may not have been hmm. as willing to say, I don't know if I want to ex you know, experiment with something like that. Well, in, in retrospect and in hindsight, it turned out to be a, a, you know, an additional game changer at Forest Dunes. And so destination golf starts and ends with the quality of the golf and with the loop, the uniqueness of that, uh, Forest Dunes um, and the high regard people have for that and the juxtaposition between those two, those two courses because one is a parkland kind of dunesy course and the other one is much more of a links and mo modern uh, um, minimalistic, if you will, uh, type course. It gives a variety of things to play for, uh, for guests. So that was a really big component and, and, and uh, fun, to, fun to see. I fell in love with the loop very early on, very quickly, uh, especially when I would be walking down the fairway and see a sprinkler head with the yardages upside down because it was for that direction, not for the direction I was headed. And I kept reminding myself, oh, that's right, turn around and look around. In fact, Rich, it's led to me sort of developing a official slash unofficial policy when our viewers or listeners send me a note and, you know, what do you think of the loop? I went there and played it and this kind of, I don't even respond until they've confirmed that they've played it in both directions. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't want to hear your opinion of it until you've gone the other way mm -hmm. because it's, it, you haven't experienced it. Um, and right. I know that's still part of the, part of the messaging that, uh, that Don and the great team there are getting out is, yeah, this is a special place and you do want to play both the dunes course and the loop but the loop is two courses. You know, we've right. got to make sure you get around it in both ways. Well, that then, of course, wisely necessitates an overnight stay. And so um, I know that there's been a lot of development happening in the lodging world at Forest Dunes because the more popular you become, the more rooms, the more beds and heads, heads and beds that you need to plan on. So what's next? What are you looking at next at that property as you've just kind of gotten the keys handed to you? Well, I think, you know, 2021, which we, we hope is going to be a fantastic year, is going to be, um, uh, you know, there's going to be a lot of things behind the scenes, Bill, that we, uh, you know, the infrastructure and the back office processes, systems, uh, you know, if, the, if there's a, um, I won't call it a problem, but a challenge that any place like Forest Dunes has is the growth that it has experienced requires, you know, more muscle and more horsepower with everything kind of behind the scenes that you don't probably see as a guest that that need to continue to be upgraded and improved and enhanced because of the increased traffic that is coming through the resort. And so there's going to be a fair bit of, I'll call it invisible work that we're advancing, you know, in 2021. The bootlegger, which is the, the 10 hole short course. Love that. Love um, that. Dave. Interestingly enough, um, uh, Riley Johns and, and Keith Reb. Keith Reb was the first person to put a, uh, a spade in the ground at Stream Song, working for Bill Core and Ben Crenshaw at the time. And so I've got relationships there and that are being kind of renewed and so forth. But the bootlegger had a very soft opening last year. This year will be kind of the, the grand presentation of the bootlegger. And we're installing, you know, audio systems and, and making that an environment that's going to be a real fun, lively environment to play uh, and, 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 and uh, enjoy when you're not out on the two regulation courses. Um, lodging is definitely something that we're looking at to add more, uh, more and different types of accommodations for people to stay in. And, and so that's something that's high on our radar screen. And then of course, the other major issue that checked the box for us at Forest Dunes was room for and sand dunes, uh, available for the development of a third golf course. Yeah. I've been which, hearing whispers of that for a couple of years now. So I wondered if that was still on the drawing board. Well, it certainly is on the drawing board. I in fact, I mean, it's, it, it's, you know, I would say vitally important for the future development and growth of forest dunes. And, you know, my experience at Streamsong going from two courses, you know, the, the red and the blue course, and then bringing Gil Hanson, 
to make that the only destination in the world where you've got core Crenshaw Doak and enhanced courses at, at one venue is that going from 36 to 54, it's not linear, it's, it's more exponential. Yeah. And so before we can kind of pull the rip cord on the third course, which you know we'll be kicking around and looking at different options and routings and, and, and so forth very quickly, um, you, you better have that infrastructure in place. Otherwise you're gonna be so overwhelmed that you're not gonna be able to provide a really solid guest experience. And yeah. so things like uh, uh, food and beverage, things like um, certainly enough rooms on the lodging side to, to be able to take advantage of having three and a half golf courses. Yeah. Um, it's a big deal. It's a big deal for the uh, for Roscommon. It's a big deal for the local communities there. And as you said, you're bringing a lot of people in that are, you know, not just Northern Michigan uh, golf aficionados. You're bringing people in from all over the country. And so we want to make sure that we do it right and and use uh, obviously what we did at Streamsong as, as a bit of a model for us. I don't know how many people realize um, that there recently in the last yeah, few years has been added during the summer daily direct flights from Dallas into Traverse City. I mean, there, there are a lot of there are a lot of diehard golfers in states where you can't go outside in July who are jumping on a plane and coming into Northern Michigan. You'll hear accents all over Northern Michigan and certainly you'll hear them at, at Forest Dunes. For those people who, who want to experience what life is like in 80 degree temperatures with no humidity and just this ability to go out and enjoy the game. And you talk about those infrastructure things and I'm reminded of the importance of golfers and travelers understanding how much effort goes into providing a great guest experience? It goes, it goes to, like you said, the unseen things. It goes to the infrastructure. It goes to having Wi-Fi. It goes to making sure, like you said, the food and beverage is up to snuff and that you have enough electricity to power all these things. And, uh, and at Forest Dunes, it's just as likely that your cell phone won't have a signal as it will. You just never know. It depends on the carrier or how you stand if you have one leg in the air or where you are, which I think is by the way, a good thing in a lot of cases, but I understand that if you're going to, you, you've got to kind of prepare for all sorts of demands from guests. Um, what are you seeing then as projections for 21? Last year surprised everybody. We thought, well, for a while, we thought we weren't going to have a season. Right. And then when we had it, it was a sprint for everybody involved from start to finish, which was great. How are early bookings? What's early revenue looking like for 21 at Forest Dunes? Are we going to match last year? Well, the so obviously this is my first kind of go around looking at you know what's happening and comparing it to a period of time when we didn't own the resort. But it's uh, I would say extraordinarily promising. Um, the pace is well ahead of last year, and last year was a record. Yeah. So that's very promising, um, but it's also uh, for, for the, the team that we have on the ground, it's promising, but it's like, oh my God, you know, what's coming at us here? Because last year was a very challenging year, just, you know, staffing and ensuring that you can attend to all of the things that you need to do um, when you have uh, that type of business. But no, it looks really good. Um, you know, I think that golf in general and, and, and certainly destination golf um, where you can kind of provide that getaway experience, you know, um, they all seem to be in places that have iffy, you know, cell phone coverage. They're, you know, described as being out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, I was highly criticized uh, for the stream song, you know, evolution right. on why in the world would anybody want to go there? Um, and I've got a rule that the, the, the nearest town for any great destination resort has got to have a dollar general store. And that's my criteria. If you don't have a dollar general store in the town, you are not going to be a successful destination. But, um, but that's the beauty of it too. You can get away a bit. The, the feel is, is all about, you know, having fun and enjoying your time with uh, your colleagues, your golf buddies, your, uh, if it's a, a business getaway or a retreat of some sort. And what we want to do is just make sure that the guests don't have to worry about anything and don't even notice anything other than I'm um, getting 
people that care about my happiness while I'm here. I'm getting great people that are going to uh, provide ans good answers to questions that I have and, and just give me the ultimate golf experience. And uh, as I said before, it all starts and it ends with the quality of the golf and then everything else around it, whether it's food or lodging or whatever the case may be, is exceptionally important, but it is um, it, it is almost secondary to providing golf because that's why people are going there. They want to see a great golf course with great playing conditions and, and have a lot of fun doing that. Now, when you take on the responsibility of, of a new property like Forest Dunes, do you get to play? Or are you always in meetings? Are you always uh, working the books and, and trying to uh, to be the owner? Well, that's going to be the, uh, that's yet to be determined. Uh, but I will say, um, I will definitely uh, enjoy um, uh, being able to get outside. You know, I, I've been inside in conference rooms for basically 30 years of my career. And now my office is going to be more uh, uh, outdoors and, and with sunscreen on and stuff like that. But I'll look forward to, um, uh, you know, spending time with uh, our, our employees who want to get out and play. And, and, and I'll, I'll look forward to spending time with guests who want to uh, uh, get out and play and, and be happy to join them. And, and we also have the unique feature, as you know, Bill, at Forest Dunes is there's a, there's a private membership. Right. And so there are actually, uh, uh, you know, longtime members of the club who I will get to know and, and uh, develop relationships with. And so, yeah, my uh, I'm not sure how good my golf game will be, but I'll, I'll talk a good game on the golf course and, and we'll see what happens. Well, here's hoping that uh, this summer, at least one one afternoon, you and I can get out and at least take on the bootlegger together. It'd be a pleasure to get to tee it up with you, even if it's just with wedges and a couple of putters. And uh, we're excited. We're excited to have yet another round of enthusiasm and, and passion pumped back into Forest Dunes. Lou was, he was, he was beloved. I mean, he's a guy who walks around giving people hugs. It's pretty, it's pretty unusual in this era. I loved everything he did there. And so glad that you share that passion that he has. And uh, we wish you nothing but the best there in Ross Common. Thank you, Bill. We'll look forward to seeing you up there and um, everybody else uh, in Michigan and uh, in the region, come on up and, uh, and uh, experience uh, what great golf is. And uh, our hope is that uh, when we take a look at Forest Dunes, you know, two, three, four, five years ahead, we'll just continue to incrementally make it a better and better and better and more exceptional golf destination.